There, there's been an awful lot of political violence introduced mm. into British politics, and that's to me, that's the loss of the argument. As soon yeah. as you're going to be aggressive and violent with someone else, that's because you haven't got an argument and you know they're right, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. and you just can't admit it. But, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's totally unacceptable. And it's being kind of almost promoted, you know? Like, so, we, sorry, did you... Oh, I think all fascists should be beaten down on site. Right, okay. That, see, now this this is exactly the, the thing. Okay, well, what what's a fascist? Right, I, I honestly believe that someone like that that pound shop Enoch Powell, Nigel Farage, is bringing fascism back into back into British politics. Hang on, hang on. Politics. Well, well, let's, hang on. Let, hang on. Yeah, we'll, hang on. we'll hear him out. You know, we'll hear him it's out. like the latest one that's really upset me is um, a news channel did... Um, an investigation into yeah. the funding of his party. So he is now Sorry, he, he's, na he's now banned that news station, Channel 4 News, from yeah. attending any of his rallies. And suppression of the, of the press is not the way we need to go forward. You know, but well, I agree. I completely but, agree. You know, what I have noticed is, is since Brexit, whether you, you know, whether you voted remain or leave now, I think is actually irrelevant because the amount of division it's brought into this country. Yeah. And I was brought up in London and South Wales during the 80s. And I remember seeing the National Front on the streets yeah. and things like that. And it's happening again. Okay, and I, well, think, I think whether you're a leaver or a remainer, yeah. we've been betrayed over Brexit. And really, we need to get on with it. You know, because even the remainers now are saying, this is just destroying our country. The division yeah. in our country is appalling. And we need to do something. We need to stand up and say, look, enough is enough. I, I completely agree, which is honestly, this is why we're here having these dialogues on the street. Absolutely. You know, we, 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 we want people who disagree. That, I mean, like this lady voted Remain, but she's very concerned about I'm artistic a Remainer. expression. I'm a I, Remainer, I, I, but I, I'm so... I'm I'm so disillusioned with our political system yeah. at the moment, and that's why a lot of these a lot of these parties with somewhat dubious beliefs. That's when they get in a power vacuum. Is the worst thing that can happen in politics. Absolutely. And we've had one since 2016. Yeah. yeah. And it, is it any wonder that people vote for these people because the major political parties have failed us? They have. You know, repeatedly. They have. They're, they've been terrible, and they've been looking out for their own interests alone. Exactly. And they, that's. Exactly. I mean, there's no excuse for Theresa May being there apart from to preserve the Conservative Party. That's, this, the, that's the only reason. Is, but isn't it a case of better the devil you know? Because if she goes, we might end up with someone like Boris Johnson, and that's well, just ridiculous. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. I, like, so now, th this is what I want to talk about, because I, I find your characterizations of them uncharitable. Um, and oh, I extremely so. Well, extremely yeah, but, uncharitable. But, but do you not think that contributes to the problem? I try and keep my views to myself, you know. I, I, yeah. if, if I'm out socially and someone sure, says sure, to me, yeah. oh, I was a Remainer or I'm yeah. a Lever, I just say, well, as is your choice, I don't tend to do that. But, you know, do we really want someone that's a potential prime minister for this country that referred to Muslim women as letterboxes and African countries as bongo bongo land? I agree that we're his already, rhetoric is not... We're already enough of a well, laughing stock around the world well, over on, this whole thing. Okay, so let, let's let's talk about that, because... the. the I agree with you that's a rude thing to say, but I don't think it's anything that's outside of the bounds of, like, something that you'd say about them. Oh, well, I disagree. You'd I, say about I Boris, disagree. right? No, no. I, well, no. I, I believe in nonviolent direct action. But if I'm confronted... Well, what does that mean, sorry? It means I'll protest, but right. I don't believe that you should raise your fists. That should only ever be a thing of defense. But didn't you say but, something about attacking but if, fascists? If, so. I'm, if I'm out... Uh, on a protest against the EDL or something, and yeah. they get aggressive to me, I'm going to get stuck oh, in because I don't want people well, like that on the streets of Britain. It's, it's your right to defend yourself. You know, my granddad, my granddad didn't appease fascists; he shot them. Well, let, let's let's talk about this this term fascist, right? Because I, I, I'm I'm really concerned that the term fascist is being normalised. It's overused, actually. Yeah, no, I no, think no, it's well, overused. Yeah, yeah, but that's the, and, hang on, hang on. So this this is what I'm concerned about because. If if you describe someone like Nigel Farage as a fascist, well, right? A pound shop well, Enoch Powell. Well, yeah, I but that, but <laughs> well, no, 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 and I I don't agree with Enoch Powell's views either, right? I I don't agree, but I don't agree that that's necessarily fascism because fascism actually has a political science definition that actually means something to the people who use it, and, and it's people like Nick Griffin who say, okay, if they're going to call everyone fascist. Then we'll just start repackaging what we're saying in a very palatable way, which is what, exactly what's but happened. That, but that suddenly normalizes fascism. And that, that concerns me. I really think we should abandon that label completely because, like, the, the, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a scholar in this regard. Mm -hmm. I've had to read a yeah. communist manifesto. I've had to read Das Kapital. I've read, I've read The Political Doctrine of Fascism, right? It was written by Mussolini and Giovanni Gentili. And one thing that they say in there is, I mean, they want everything subject to the state. That's a core tenet of fascism. And Nigel Farage isn't like that. He's actually a lot more of a Thatcherite in that regard. So to call him a fascist, it, it makes you sound wrong. 
You know, and it makes he, you sound when angry. He carries, when he carries out fascist practices well, like suppression of the media, you know, you've I, got to think, well, what's going on? I'm, well, not okay, saying, okay. I'm not saying he's a Mussolini or an Adolf no, Hitler no, 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 or a Franco, but what good. I'm saying is some of his policies lean a little bit too far to the right well, for let, anyone to feel let, comfortable let, with. Let's talk about that then, because um, do you feel that the media is doing a fair job in covering people they don't like? Well, because the media could be contributing to but this atmosphere. You see it? a lot of arguments on both sides. You'll see the left saying, oh, they're biased against us. They give they give Farage too much TV time. Yeah. But then you'll see the right saying yeah, exactly yeah, they, the they same. All say the so thing. my attitude is, if both sides are complaining about the press, the press is doing its job, isn't it? Well, I, d I don't know, because like I, I've been lied about in the press a lot myself. And I, it really woke me up to the, the fact that they actually, they view themselves as gatekeepers. So they view themselves as the people who control the dialogue in the country. And I find that quite scary because obviously they're based in Westminster. So they're very chummy with politicians and they're all doing drugs and, you know, they're, they're all very close in together. And I really don't feel that they represent, like, I live in Swindon, you know, I don't live anywhere prestigious. No. But it's, Swindon, it's a lovely place and it's got a terrible reputation that it doesn't really deserve. But, you know, and you, you guys live in a lovely little town like this. And so it, it's one of those things that's like, if we talk to each other, then we suddenly realize, hang on, I've got a lot more in common than, with you than I do with some Channel 4 journalist. Oh, absolutely. You know, and so I, I think that um, the media are kind of trading on a reputation they had like 20 or 30 years ago, but now I think that they're being a lot more Machiavellian think, about it. I think the time has passed as well yeah. where politicians are supposed to represent their constituents. And I yeah. think that time passed a long time ago. Agreed. I mean, as far back as the 80s when I was a teenager. And I think the reason, the reason that people's views are getting so extreme, either left or right, is just because there is nobody out there that's representing us. Yep. Um, I'm a social worker. I work with veterans mm -hmm. with PTSD. And, you know, I see, I see the way that I'm a veteran myself. Hold it a little bit closer, sir. I'm a veteran myself. I served yeah. my country for 15 years, something I'm very proud of. Mm -hmm. And the way I see our veterans discarded on the street, yeah. and it isn't, it isn't because of immigration, it isn't because of brown people or black people or European migrants. It's because the government has failed in its duty of care. There's a thing called the Armed Forces Covenant, which says in return for me giving up 15 years of my life, when I came out, the army would look after me. The MOD didn't. And, and it's, you know, and so I can understand why people are so, so frustrated. But are these, are these more left or right parties any better than the centrist thing we've got at the moment? Because I didn't see a big, a big change between the Thatcher era and Tony Blair. New Labour was just Tories in red ties. And, and it, it's been the same ever since. And I can understand why people are so frustrated. But... Well, obviously, we, I mean, we have a policy of institute and a department of veterans affairs. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely disgraceful that, I'm, I mean, the last figure I looked at was about twenty-five to 30,000 uh, veterans on the streets of the United Kingdom. And I, I suspect that's actually a lot lower number than it actually is. Um, we're also seeing, you know, this government, they're not defending uh, veterans for historical uh, acts in certain, you know, we've got Soldier F, we've got a few other things like that. I mean, it's a very complicated issue, but it's clear that obviously this government, the Tory government, who most people historically would have thought would back the veterans, really aren't anymore. They're not interested in that. Um, but we would institute a Department of Veterans Affairs. We would actually put, uh, take into account veterans and veteran status and actually then um, push them up the ladder for attaining, you know, housing and things like that. Because if you've, you know, if you've served the country and you've put your life potentially on the line for the country, then, you know, that should obviously be taken into account for if you need you know, to be we, housed further on. You we know? don't ask for anything, just a fair crack of the whip, you know. Yeah. And in an ideal world, I, w I wouldn't have a job. But the other thing that worries me as well is organizations such as the EDL and certain other organizations that claim to be political movements, they're sort of hijacking veterans for their own right-wing agenda. Britain first. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Actual, fascist. actual fascists. And, yeah. and they, they tend to sort of pander to the veteran side of things because, yeah. you know, they think, oh, we'll get some back in. And the whole thing about the other week, they invaded the green that was planted where um, Fuselier Rigby was killed. Yeah, yeah. The reason there's no memorial on that site was at the request of his parents. Yeah. Round the corner is a permanent memorial with a drum made out of brass yeah, and everything. Yeah. And they go over there saying, this is disgusting, this is disgusting, trying to tap into that veteran mm. feeling of... Yeah, yeah. And but I, let me... Uh, so one, one of the things I'm really concerned about, right, and I, I'm, a, I'm an English liberal, which is different to a French liberal, and I, I make the distinction because I, I, I 
study philosophy, right? So th this is actually an important distinction. But I'm, I'm very much um, the sort of uh, personal sovereignty type of person. You know, I, I don't think the government's getting your, your, your affairs. And I deliberately go and tackle tough issues. I, I you know, specifically go and try and talk about the, the really grimy stuff as well, because, and I, I think you hit the head, nail on, right on the head with the Brit in the first part there. It, no one cares about the veterans, right? And so they, you're exactly right. They see that as prime recruiting ground because the veterans care about the veterans. The people who are suffering actually care about themselves and their friends who are really suffering. And if the Tories are like, no, we're just going to austerity, salami, slice all of your benefits away, we're not going to help you, then where do they go? You know, exactly. Labour aren't exactly. talking to them. You know, the Tories aren't talking to them. The Lib Dems aren't talking to them. You know, but UKIP, we are a British Liberal Party. We can go and talk to them. You know, and we can actually say, look, we're gonna, we're gonna, like, say, the Department of Veterans Affairs. That that would be a fantastic thing because I, I come from a military family myself. My dad was in the RAF for twenty five years as a sergeant. You know, and so I grew up. You know, we moved around the country. I lived in Germany for eight years on JHQ. You know, we we I grew up with armed men wandering around. You know, exactly. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, you know. I'm very obviously massively sympathetic to the forces. You know, my yeah. my dad is my dad served in Basra and the Falklands, not during the war, but like you know, as an administrative thing. Um, and so I'm very very concerned about that. And I don't want Britain First to be the only party who talks about that. That's no. awful. But do you not do you not feel that um, given the current political climate, that all parties are open to sort of I don't know the word I'm trying to look. Looking, looking Do you mean for, but entryism? But people, people are sort of worming their way into these parties yeah. that haven't got the core beliefs of that party. I mean, right. your, yourselves, for example, you know, there's a massive association now up in the Northwest with Tommy Robinson. Do yeah. you really want to be associated well, he, with someone like that? Well, he actually can't join the party. That's the thing, right? UKIP are actually the only party who keep the ex-BNP and Britain yeah. First people out. Yeah. And because he was in Britain First when he was like 20 years old, he can't actually join. So UKIP is actually the only party that isn't worried about that because we're, we're confident in what we believe. Yeah. You know, we think be, you know, British values are a good thing. That, and then, then the anti-racist values, you know? We're, we're the place that invented anti-racism, you know, because we're in. Oh, Absolutely, I marched on the streets in the of 80s, course, rock right? against racism, you know. I exactly, we, and I'm of, I'm of mixed race descent myself, you know, because yeah. my grandfather on my father's side was an immigrant. So it's like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of, like, accidentally being a racist or something, because I know I'm not. I know what my beliefs are, I know what my history is, and I know, I know that this is not that kind of country. We're a very anti-racist country. Well, it's like I, I, I've always said, I do not believe for one minute as some people do, that the 52% of voters that took part in the referendum are racist. It's ridiculous. But I do believe that the racists now believe that 52% of the population yeah. is sympathetic, and yeah. that's what we need. You know, That's why we've got to tackle the, the tough issues. These are the people we need to be scared of. And perhaps, and as I was just saying to a friend yesterday, it's not the knuckle-draggers the knuckle draggers that we see marching outside yeah, the mosques yeah, in Cardiff. Yeah. It's the people behind them with the money and power. They're the people we need yeah, to be yeah. afraid of. Yeah. But th th this is why, um, this is why UKIP is, is actually, it's, it's got a really diverse manifesto. It's got a really diverse set of uh, concerns. And they all come from the sort of British liberals perspective. And specifically because we know that like the people you're talking about target the same issues. And because exactly. no, they're on savory issues, nobody really wants to talk about them. It's like, well, like, easier out of sight, out of mind. But that's how they grow. But it's you not. Know? We need to talk about these issues. We yes. need to keep these people in public sight. Yes. Because, you know, we, we had an issue just a couple yep. of years ago where Combat 18 actually had an after rally party at a venue just outside. Pont -a -Prix, then you yeah. can't have people like that on your streets. You know, what we need more than anything now is people to come together. We need unity, not more yeah. division. Yeah. And I think what we really need to do is, by whatever means necessary, is get Brexit out of the way so that yeah. we can yeah. start yeah. dealing with important yeah. issues like Britain yeah. First and the EDL yeah. and Combat Why, why do people go to them? That's the thing. We, we've, we've got to address the core of the, the issue. Why do people go to these things? You know, I, like, honestly, I honestly believe because it fills a void in their life. They feel yeah. so disenfranchised from yeah. society and the political system. Yeah. And that is what these people do. You yeah. know, look at the state America's in at the moment. <laughs> And I mean, it's... I don't want a Charlottesville in Britain. No, exactly. I don't want that. No, you know? we don't. No. And I don't think it would ever happen because I like to think that the British people would just turn around and say, do you know what? We had Mosley in the 30s. We had, yeah, the, yeah. We had the NF yeah. in the 70s and 80s. We're not having that again. No. It's it's just not acceptable. Yeah. But the, the but that's the thing, right? So that's the thing I'm concerned about because they... So, okay, let's let's get into a rough issue, right? This is going to be a difficult one, but I think that as, as, as proud Brits, we can talk about this. I'll try. In a, in, <laughs> and, and we can be fair, right? Without... So... I think that, for example, the grooming gang scandals 
really help Britain first. I think they really help that party because then they go see all Muslims are like this. This is just something they do. And, and then they say, well, look at the Labour Party councillors and MPs who kept quiet. Look at Sarah Champion, right? She spoke out about it and the party itself came down on her like a ton of bricks. And it's like, no, come on, you can't just say that because the, these people like, like Tommy Robinson doesn't just spring fully formed out of the ether. You know, he's he's the product of a series of really bad events and failures by the establishment to, to actually take action, right? Um, and the Mirror, uh, four days ago now, published an article about um, a young girl. She'd been raped by these grooming gangs when she was 11, and it happened until she was like 19, and now she's 23. And it happened over 100 times. And every time the police got involved, they arrested her for being a prostitute and not the men who were raping her. Now. I mean, as soon as I've said, I've laid this out and like, right, okay, this is a thorny issue, you know, and, but we have to tackle it. We have to tackle it. And it's, it's not that, it's not that, you know, the Muslims are evil, obviously, that's not what we think, but it is that the people around in the, in the power structures, there's a, there was a report by a Dr. Alexis J in 2014 about the Rotherham grooming gangs. And she found that there were multiple failures from the institutions themselves because they were afraid of being called racist. Now, I think that's a real phenomenon in this country. And it's because I think we're an anti-racist country. We're so afraid of someone saying racist but, at you. But if someone, that, says, if someone says there is a problem in a certain area of England with Muslim grooming gangs, that isn't racist. When someone agreed. turns around and says all Muslims a child molesters, that's racism. Exactly. And exactly. what it is, it's exploitative politics. Yeah. It's I, well, hang on a sec, hang politics, let, can we, can, we, is... can we pause on that? Because you, I, I love the distinction you've made there, right? That's absolutely true, and I 100% I agree with that, right? But the problem is, because it's an unsavory issue, a lot of people just want to ignore it. They don't want to talk about it. And that means that, you know, the, the Conservative Party, La Labour, honestly, are basically complicit in a lot of this, which is really disappointing. And this is why Sarah Champion is actually such a hero for speaking out about it, because they would prefer they'd be quiet, right? And that means that if the, the politically correct establishment in Westminster are like, we're not going to talk about this issue, we, we, we you know, the, out of sight, out of mind, then Britain first come along and go, We'll talk about this issue, and guess what we think? And it's but awful. The problem, the problem as well with organisations like Britain First is they use scapegoat, scapegoat politics, which is the lowest common denominator yeah, anyway. But they push, they push this, you know, the Muslim grooming gangs. White people commit sex crimes as well. It isn't a Muslim issue. Well, it's a societal hang, issue, hang on, and it's so, something we need to address. So now and hang, they actually hang on a have a large number of members yeah. within their ranks that are currently in prison Absolutely. or on a list for committing exactly the offences yeah. that they... But Well, I mean, the, the, look politics. at Jimmy Savile. Look at Jimmy Savile. The BBC covered that up for decades. Exactly. You know, that's, a, that's a grooming gang scandal, right? But the, the, the problem is, so now, I, I completely agree with you that it's not unique to the Muslim community, right? Absolutely not. So I don't want to single them out in particular for this, uh, in like in general. I don't want to say, oh, it's all them and no one else. That's not true, obviously. We know that's not true. But the, the when, you, when you equivocate like that, I think that what a lot of the victims of the grooming gangs and the, fa the wider families hear is, we're not going to do anything, right? Because the problem is still going on. I mean, in the last two months, there were something like, what, 38 men and two women arrested in Rotherham? 40 more arrests last week for grooming gangs. And the, the, these were going on way past Alexis J's report saying, look, this is the problem. And so when, when you equivocate, essentially what you're saying is this isn't a problem that is actually coming out of these communities to them. Now, I don't agree. I, I agree with you that like they, there are like, I, I mean, I would love to see people at the BBC held to account for Jimmy Savile and, and who knows who else, you know, but we can't hold them to account at least yet. Um, but what I think the, the people who are supporting Tommy here is that you don't care, right? And I'm not saying you don't care. You obviously do care. I do care. I, 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 know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Please don't mention that man. No, 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 no. But this is the, see this. This is why we're having these dialogues, right? Because I I know that you do. You are, I mean, you're obviously a well-informed chap. You know, you've obviously thought about your positions on these things. You, you've reasoned it out. But I. I'm worried about the communication gap between the conversation we're having and then what they hear when they hear you mm. like give a blanket statement. Mm. And they, I think they do hear the opposite of what you intend. Yeah. And I don't think you intend to not be understood. And I don't think they are looking to misinterpret. And so, I, I mean, dialogues like this, I think, are, are crucial to getting the sort of 
the country back on track. And I don't think these are going to be had in the media. So where can we have them? You know, you raised, you raised, raised the issue about the grooming gangs. And of course, yeah. it's of concern to everybody in the country. If it, yeah. if it isn't, there's obviously something wrong with you. But I don't, I don't like the way even the press are portraying it. They always put the word Muslim before it. Now, when, when a white person does something and it's unsavory, they don't put Christian Joe blogs did this That's a good you know point. so why 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 distinguish just because someone's got a slightly darker pig now, skin I, pigment I, than i've got i, and I it, don't think um, I, I i agree um okay so and I, I, you said about how people have failed i think this whole grooming scandal is it's it's a nationwide problem that is ongoing and when you see so little action in mm. places like rotherham you see such little action yeah people like me sit back and say well, are the police complicit or are they just turning a blind oh, eye? Well, are the, the politicians thing. complicit? And that further yep. shakes our belief in the current political system. And then again, these other organizations, you know, yep. there are left wing organizations that are just cheeks of the same backside, Antifa Absolutely. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They're just as bad. And, and I think what's happening is it allows these more extremist parties to get a toehold because one, one side will say, oh, you're blaming all Muslims yeah. for this. So the people that lean slightly towards the right will go to that party, yeah. whereas people that lean more towards the left, they will go to a more left-wing extremist party yes. because they're saying, well, you can't say that about so all, you know. Can I, can I tell you about a conversation I had with a lady in Totnes? Uh, she wasn't from Tottenham. I think she was like Hull or something originally, and um, and this is why this is why I'm saying that it's it's liberals who have to have these hard conversations. Because I tell you what, man, I I was listening to what she was saying and I was just like, this is this is a difficult thing to talk about. So she had fled from Hull, where there there was a, a large um, Pakistani community, um, because in her opinion they were racist against the English. Now that's no, now see, you, you, yeah, now that's that exactly right. That's e exactly. You think, well, what do you mean? And so I talked to her, and she was just explaining. Look, they they seem to have an innate racial animus against the English, right? And so I'm sat there thinking, Christ. I mean, she wasn't a frothing at the mouth radical. She obviously wasn't a BMP supporter. She she was just a little old dear who was, you know, she was probably about sixty, and she was like, look, I know you don't want to hear this, but I lived it. I lived it, you know, I heard what they said to us. I heard it, you know, it was my sons being bullied. It was my daughters being groomed. This is, this is the, hang but on, hang on. Hang are on, they hang just on. her sons and daughters being groomed by people? The color of those well, people's no, skin no, no, has no, got absolutely on. No, no, it's nothing, nothing to do, to it's do nothing with to do with their skin. I agree, I agree with you, it's nothing to do with the skin, right? Um, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't consider race to be a form of politics. Like, I don't believe that your race means anything. Well. It, so you've got more skin pigmentation well, anything, than me. Right, it doesn't mean you anything. Know, if you cut me, do I not bleed? Exactly. No, I totally agree. I mean, like I said, I'm a, I'm of mixed race ancestry. I don't believe race means a damn thing. I, I believe what's in your head, your ideas mean something, right? And so th this is why I think we actually do need to have a conversation about Islam. Now, I say Islam, and that's a very broad tent, right? There are lots of different strains of Islam, some good, some bad. And I, I think everyone can agree with that, right? So the, then I, I actually did my research into the kind of Islam that comes from Pakistan. It's a, it's a type of Islam called Diabandi Islam. And this was founded to oppose the British Empire. So it actually is founded to be an anti-British form of Islam. And it's the same form of Islam the Taliban have. So it's, it's very fundamentalist, right? And so if you've got a lot of people, I mean, do you, uh, do you know anything about the religiosity of Pakistan? A little. A uh, little you know, yeah. blasphemy laws. I mean, yeah. they, they're, they're yeah. very, very fundamental. You know, well, hang on a let me, up, let me, hang on, hang on. Pakistan well, no, or no, Saudi me, Arabia oh, as, exa oh, no, no, as examples of a certain form of Islam yeah. that suits your agenda no, no, is listen. quite frantic, is listen. quite frankly ridiculous. No, 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 listen, you're not listening, right? Let me finish, right? It's, I agree that it's not all Islam, but it is Pakistani Islam that is Diabandi. That, that it's no, no, I think what you'll find is it's a bandi Islam. It isn't Pakistani Islam any more than well, it's, it's Saudi the, Arabian well, Islam. On. Saudi Arabia are a vile nation. Of they commit horrendous atrocities. Of course. And the same happens in Kashmir and India and yes. Pakistan. But to turn around and say it is Pakistani Muslims, no. It just happens to be that that particular branch of that religion, you know, it's like Seventh-day yeah, Adventists. No, no, I agree. I agree. say I agree. that all American Christians are praying right. for the end of the well, world, like on. the Seventh-day Adventists. 
have yeah, advanced no, no. I, l- let me, let and me. this is what we need to do we need to stop we need to stop picking on certain sections of society believe it or not i'm a skinhead it's part of the first ever multicultural street cult that ever existed right. in the UK. It's based on mod and Jamaican culture. It's yeah. all inclusive. Well, People that dress like me and are racist are just racists that dress like me. They're not skinheads. Sure, yeah, yeah. But we've I've experienced it. I've been that scapegoat because I wear Dr. Yeah. Martin boots and a Harrington jacket. I've had racists screamed at me sure. down the street, well, hang, and yet hang. I'm actually a member of, of an anti-racism organisation. Of, of right. And it's so when you turn around and say, "Oh, it's Pakistani no, no, this, no. or it's or no. it's um, Saudi Arabian this, or it's British this," I'm of Irish descent, yeah. and I went through that in the seventies yeah, over yeah, yeah, here. Absolutely. Every time a bomb went off, I got a kick in. Of course, nothing to do with me. Of course, and nobody ever turned round and said, "Oh well, this predominant Republican tranche of the Catholic Church are all terrorists." Well, no. And what's happening is people people are scapegoating. They're picking on a thing, and the reason it's so easy to do it to people of the Islamic faith is because the vast majority of Islamists of it of Muslims happen to have darker skin color than no, us no, and it gives people a bogeyman and we need to I, expel I know, I know. that. But, but the thing is, the grooming gangs are happening. Oh, there's no yeah, but we, Okay, okay, but hang, not, on, hang on, hang on. But that is not, that is not a Pakistani problem. Uh, it's not, on, a, it's not a Muslim problem hang on, hang on. any more than it's a Christian problem or a agree. Scottish problem. I don't agree with you. I don't child agree molesters with you, right? are and child if, molesters. If, if, it doesn't no, no. matter about the hue of their skin or the religion I, they I follow. Can I explain why? Can I explain why? Because I, I like, I've spent a lot of time researching this, and I, I really think we have to have a very honest conversation. It's not all Islam. I agree, right? But in in Pakistan, they have a particular strain of Islam that is anti-British, and so when this lady in Hull says the Pakistani Muslim community seems to be racist against the English, I think it's actually quite an obvious connection that we can say that their version of Islam that hates Britain is actually making them kind of racist against the English. I think that's nonsense. Yeah, any, but why? Any, why do you think that's nonsense? Because if I if I particularly despised Spanish people and their followings, I wouldn't go and live in Spain. Yeah, but what if I they honestly do? believe that any Pakistani person that is a, that lives in this country, yes, there's going to be bad apples in every barrel, the same as there are in the white community, in the Afro-Caribbean community, but to to particularly turn around and say, these Pakistani Muslims are doing this. That's that's just part of the problem. That's not curing anything. Yeah. But that's, that's not, not curing no, anything. No, hang on, hang on. Look, hang on a second. Look for, right? the, look for look. the people that are actually but, doing it and but now, prosecute them but now, as individuals, okay, but, not as a race okay. or a religion. But what does a Tommy Robinson supporter hear from that? What Tommy Robinson supporters hear is all Muslims, child molesters, end of chat. No, no, yeah, no, but what do they hear from you, I mean? When you say that, they hear, we're not going to address this issue. Oh, no, I'm a race traitor. Well, no, no, I don't know. No, that's no. what they call me. They call me a race okay, traitor. But... Because I happen to believe that everybody, regardless of religion, gender, sexuality, colour of their skin, whether they hop round on one foot, walk yeah. on two feet, we're all the same. We're all equal. And until we start treating each other as equals and looking for these criminals, because that's what they are, and not based on their religion they're or victims. the colour of their skin the, or, where, or whether they're Im- immigrants or not, take care of the victims and prosecute the criminals. But don't turn around and say, Pakistani Islam preaches this. Because yeah, I have many it Pakistani does. friends and that, it's of totally course. against their beliefs. Uh, of course it and is. And so we need to stop scapegoating. Yeah. And actually, what you're saying that it was that woman that said that, I've only got your word for well, that. I, I've you put know, the video could, up on my channel. I can your, show you no, the video. No, it could be your beliefs. I don't know. No, no, I can show but the you thing the video. Is, we need to stop, stop scapegoating. You know, people say, oh, the Muslim community doesn't integrate. Can you you blame them? Well, but then if they're again, racist against the English, again, why would they? I've travelled all over Europe where there are British expats. The British expats in Spain they don't, don't integrate. integrate. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Do you I know gr- what I mean? I agree, but do they the, form the grooming British gangs? The British expats in Germany don't integrate. But do they form grooming gangs? Because they feel isolated. And, and the more you victimise people because they come from a certain religion or a certain area where there are some unsavoury beliefs. You know, I served in the first Gulf War. Do I actually believe that every Saudi? Do I actually believe that every Saudi Arabian I'm, I've met yeah. is in favour of people being stoned and beheaded? Iraq okay, okay. was one of the most forward-thinking Arabic nations there was. We bombed it back into the Stone I know, Age. I know. And and that's where this rhetoric started. An illegal war that we were I, sent I agree. to I by don't Tony know, I Blair. Didn't, I didn't support and, the Iraq war. And, and, I agree. And and, and this right. scapegoating okay, has got can to we, stop. Can, can, okay. So like so I want I want to take this slowly one step at a time because I. I Honestly, I, I swear to God, I feel this is a very important issue. Um, I, I, 
honestly think that you don't want to engage with what has actually happened, right? And that's 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 how I'm hearing from you. No, You're, no, no. Hang, hang no, on, hang I on. am not denying that there's a problem with grooming gangs. Right, okay, but can we stop there? Can we stop to, there? Sorry, they are right? child molesters. It doesn't yeah, matter why? what the color of their skin is. No, I didn't say it does. No, nothing nothing about this is color of skin, right? This is all about ideas, right? This is all about beliefs. Now, uh, like racism is a form of belief, right? It's what you believe about other people. You believe you're superior to me because you've got a different color skin exactly, to me. Exactly, right? That's racism. Exactly, yeah. that's ridiculous, right? But what if you believe that you're superior to people because you have a better religion to them, than them? Well, that's been going on for centuries, hasn't it? Think of the but, Crusades. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, no, it, of course it has. But it's still going on now. But I'm sorry, if you're, no matter what religion you are, if your religion, you believe that your religion is giving you a higher purpose that lets you go out and molest right. children or attack other people because they're not that religion. Yeah. Sorry, mate, you've got it wrong. That's uh, well, not how it okay, works. Okay, great. Now, that, that yeah, that, that's exactly what I wanted to hear, right? Because that's what Tommy Robinson supporters want to hear too. But we, it took us a long time to get to that because you were too busy defending the, the, the Islam in general than getting to the point where it's like, look, there, there is a branch of Islam that does actually hate this country and makes them feel superior to the people who live but here. Do, right? I believe, do I believe that there is a hardcore mass group of these individuals in this country? No. No more than I believe that there's a okay. hardcore mass group of but is, is that just walking it, Yeah, but is that just down to your own lack of life experience? Because I've not been to Hull. Right. I'm not from Hull, okay. right? But hang okay. on, hang, hang no, on. Hang, let's, no, no, let's hang on. Talk, come on, no, you, come on no, you've spoken you've quite it, a lot now. You made it personal, so let's, no, no, no. let's well, talk about life experience, shall we? Well, yeah, I okay. emigrated here from Ireland when I was three years old. Yeah. I was subjected to horrendous racism. No blacks, no dogs, yeah. no Irish. Irish. Yeah. I was raised in the South Wales Valleys during the Thatcher years. I was here during yeah. the miners' strike. I saw what the Conservatives did to South Wales. Yeah. They decimated it. You know, it was almost 100% unemployment. Yeah, yeah. In 1987, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. I joined the armed forces. Yeah. I served in Germany, Northern Ireland, Kosovo, Bosnia, Sierra Leone, Saudi Arabia, Iraq. After I finished in the army, I went to university. I gained a first class honours degree in psychology and a diploma in social work. Mm -hmm. I then went to work for the Big Issue magazine as an area manager in the Northeast Midlands, looking after homeless people mm -hmm. of all races and religions on the yeah. streets of the, of the Northeast yeah, yeah, of Midlands. I then, I then moved out of that and became self-employed for a while. And then due to personal circumstances and the death of someone very close to me, I went back into work. I became a social worker yeah. because I care. And I will not accept anyone scapegoating any section of this society. Yes, there's a problem with grooming gangs, but the problem is they're child molesters and they yeah, should be treated why as such. Are they child so molesters? don't label it Islamist grooming gangs because you don't label it what? Christian. Hang Nobody on, says Christian. Christian Jimmy Savile well, raped okay, but, and abused but, but these, over a hundred schoolgirls. But these school people girls. seem to have a religious conviction about nonsense. it. Nonsense. No, that's not nonsense. Nonsense. It, have, you, have you read their court transcripts? I've read the Quran. Yeah, but I've read I the Quran read too. Their court but if you read their court transcripts, they'll say they're worthless white English trash. Now that sounds like a racist statement to me. But that's why they targeted these girls. Worthless, white, English trash. Now, hang on. And when this lady comes down from Holland and says, well, honestly, the Pakistani communities up there seem to be racist against us. And it's because they follow a particularly anti-British form of Islam that makes them think they're superior to the British and they're better than them religiously. It seems to all add up. And so we can't just say, well, it's because they're child molesters. No, I think it might be because there are well, some religious zealots. Okay, then, perfect example. Britain First claimed to be a white Christian organization. Would yeah, you say they're no, Christians? No, they're fascists. Would you say they're Christians? Well, they probably are still Christian, but like they're also fascists. Do you think fascists. they go to church on a Sunday? And I, I don't know. No, I don't follow Britain First. Of course they don't. It's don't their know. excuse for having a go at Islam. Sure. And, and I'm sorry, but I'm fed up of this. You need to treat people for what they are. If someone's a child molester, they're a child molester. Agreed. It doesn't matter what their religion is or what the color of their skin is. If someone's a bank robber, they don't turn around and say Muslim bank robber or Christian bank robber. They say bank robber. Yeah, but what if he was and yelling Allahu Akbar while he did it? It's scapegoat politics. And by you passing like, on this rhetoric from this woman see which now is we all can't even is. talk about it it is rhetoric now we can't talk about it nothing i've said is rhetoric everything i said is factually true from her it's rhetoric you you had no at the time she was speaking to you you had no physical evidence in your hand you're so saying she's a liar. you're saying that all the pakistani community no, i didn't say in Hull i didn't say all i've got i didn't say well, all it's just there no, is a problem with racism against the english in the pakistani no, community these 
these Pakistanis that believe that are no more prevalent in their culture than the Nazis are in ours. I disagree. I disagree. Look, we, we, in 20 Look. different cities, these grooming gangs were created. They still but go do you on. Think, do you not think that in 20 other cities there are, there are white grooming gangs and there are no. white child molesters well, are and white race and white yeah, rapists? Gangs. Because if you don't, one, you're sadly deluded, and two, you're bloody racist. No, but, no listen, that's the, see, now that's the end of the dialogue, no, isn't it? It is, I'm afraid. Yeah, but that's the thing. Just, you you, yeah, but you're, you're just, yeah, but I'm just say, stating things that are true. You've just accused the whole tranche of our society of being anti-British child molesters. No, no, they're not all child molesters and they're not all anti-British, but there is a religious doctrine that is anti-British and it is creating grooming gangs. There are 20 different cities, man. Hundreds of thousands of victims. Like, you, you, no, no, see, see, you're, no, listen, let me finish, man. You are literally saying these criminals who we are arresting now, we actually know that they're criminals, they're not part of a wider problem, but it is a wider problem. It is a wider problem. We know we can trace the intellectual roots of it. We can trace the supremacy of it. We can see the victims who say, look, they seem to be racist against us. And you're like, no, you're a racist for saying it. That doesn't solve the problem. And a Tommy supporter thinks, well, okay, he doesn't care. He's not gonna listen to me with an ear of charity. He's gonna say that I'm a bad person for being the victim of this. Me, Honestly. Victim, no, not me, them. Me, the victims of these gangs, their families are actual victims, man. I know, that's why we have to have these conversations. Of course it does, of course it does. No, look, I'm of mixed race descent. I am of mixed race descent. My heart, part of my family is not from this country, right? But there is a real problem that we have to address. And Hard to breathe is a very warm-hearted community. Yes, I know. It's a, no, I don't think you do. I do. It's my a, wife lived here, it's actually. A, it's my a, wife lived here. It's a I used to come visiting here. It's a university I know it town. Is. We welcome everyone across yes. the world, and they come back yes. because they feel the warmth. Yes. We do not have any problems of any description right. in regards to the university students okay. that come That's from China, yes. Africa, of not. wherever. Of course not. Because we're Welsh. Our Welsh people are yes. warm-hearted. They, they are. And Pontypridd is one of the best communities. So thank you for coming, but I think you're wasting your time, mate. Well, no, I disagree. Yeah, I, I think these are important <laughs> conversations that we need to have. That's the thing. Like, if we can't actually discuss this fairly, what can we do? I mean, are we going to say that we have no compassion for the victims of these gangs in Hull? Are we going to just say that the things they tell us about the experiences they've lived through are lies? Yeah, but it, that's the thing. This is a very privileged thing to say. You know, when this isn't happening to your children, it's very easy to say, no, these people are just racists. It's, and then getting all offend, offended and affronted, well, that doesn't change it. But I guess that uh, we've stopped listening now, so. I've got another question. Yes. Um, can you please, in very simple terms, yes. explain why people should vote to leave? The EU? Yeah. Because it's an undemocratic super state. Guy Verhofstadt recently described it as an empire. Mm -hmm. I think that this is pretty bad for anyone, let alone Britain. And they want to challenge America and China. Um, to me, that spells dark times ahead. I don't want to challenge America and China for military dominance of the world. Mm -hmm. I want us to, to be quiet and peaceful and happy and prosperous. You know, that's the, it's the total opposite of what I want. I want devolution, yeah. basically. Um, and the, the European Union is centralization. And so it's the opposite of what I think is good for the country, frankly. Okay. All right. Thank you for that answer. Um, I've got to go now. Thank, so thank you for thank, thank you, you for you coming for down. And uh, I'm still gonna vote for the end, vote remain. But thank you for. Well, the vote's done now. So. Yeah, so thank but yeah, no problem. This kind of dialogue does need. I agree. I agree. <laughs>